Yo, what's going on guys? Jay here, and today we are going to be talking some hip-hop as usual. I got the weekly report for the week of May 19th, 2023. And yeah, let's get to it. Let's talk about what dropped. Now, let's start with the elephant in the room for this week. We got Hatramine by the duo of Amine and Canadian producer K Tronada. This is the second K Tronada produced record I've listened to. Last year we had Simple by IDK. That was my first one. So going into this, I had an idea of what to expect, but not too much. Amine, personally, a, one of my favorite rappers, kind of. I mean, I like him a lot. He's good. He's good at what he does, and he's super fun. And K Tramina really won me over here. I mean, he did a great job with the production. His instrumentals are very bouncy and lighthearted. With very simple drum loops throughout the instrumentals that are hypnotic and just... They get you locked in, they get you vibing, they get your head bobbing, and yeah, they're just super fun. And Amine compliments this well with his sleek flows. He has infectious choruses that you can't help but sing along to. However, a big flaw with this album for me, despite its fun demeanor, is Amine as a lyricist here. Amine, as we saw on Limbo, is a solid and capable lyricist, but here he really regresses to very simple bars, and very overly raunchy and over the top bars. Now, normally I'm not someone who minds raunchy bars. I think they could be funny or entertaining. It doesn't really matter to me, especially for a lighthearted vibe or a fun vibe like we have here, but it's not even the bars themselves. It's just the how often they're repeating. It's every couple of lines. We're getting the Mine talking about like how big his dick is or how much sex he's having and all that, which is like cool, good for him, but it's like, I'm not trying to hear that the whole album, especially when his other lyrics are not making up for it. Very simple and obvious punchlines. I mean, one thing I appreciate about Amine typically is his clever punchlines and good references to pop culture, similar to someone like Ski Mask. But here we're just getting the most obvious bars. We're getting Stacey Dash bars because, of course, it's Amine. He's always going to throw in something about her. But it's just too simple on the writing side. And honestly, for... An album that was supposed to be like album of the summer the album everyone was going to be bumping the album to start the big rollouts this summer it really has it isn't there honestly forever is a great summer vibe pharrell's chorus is just earworm just loops in your head all day amine's flow is great and the whole song is just catchy and it is my favorite song off the album at least one of them but this is one of the only songs that really carries that like beach time, tropical, just relaxation, summertime vibe that they were going for on the album, which is disappointing. The other tracks aren't bad, they just don't, they're not doing what they're supposed to. We're also getting some poor Amine performances on songs like Salsa Up and Shut the Fuck Up 3. I mean, these songs to me are just annoying and obnoxious at times. The instrumentals are not that great. Amine is giving us repetitive and grating choruses just stuff that i'm not really trying to listen to stuff that isn't good stuff that is unpleasant to listen to but yeah i mean i know a lot of you guys are really loving this record and i agree this is a great record i'm enjoying it you got songs like forever here like i already mentioned you get the song with freddie gibbs you got k a which is a stellar outro to the album writing amine's best rapping on the whole damn record we're getting some emotional bars we're getting a nice fragile vocal sample in the background and I, it's just a great way for the album to end and it also showcases the potential they had now i'm not saying k tramine is a bad album far from it i still think it's very good it's just not where i think a lot of you guys have it but yeah for those reasons stated i will be giving k tramine a 7.3 out of 10. Now, again, we are talking about the Yin Yang tapes by Suicide Boys. This week, we got Fall Seasons. And again, like I said last week, Suicide Boys is not a rap group I'm super into or familiar with. They're cool and I could get behind what they do. I just don't listen to them that much. This is, again, one of the few projects I have listened to them from him. We are getting the same structure with the intro plus three more tracks. And I mean, yeah, Suicide Boys did their thing. This is another quality EP. The songs are good. I love the electronic video game like synths that they are weaving into the hard, booming production, taking influence from 3 Six Mafia, of course. You got that South Florida influence using the hard hitting 
bass. And I mean, it's just a fun vibe. If this is what you're into, I get it. I could get behind it and I am enjoying it. This is great aux music. Again, the bass is fucking kicking. It is fucking booming. I mean, everyone knows when you're bumping Suicide Boys, you could hear them driving past from about five miles away. You know when you hear a fellow Suicide Boys fan. Scrim and Ruby both have great flows as they rip up the instrumentals on this beat, rapping fast as hell. They do use a lot of vocal distortion, which is a cool aesthetic, and again, I can get behind it. I enjoy it. It just does water down the quality of the songs, the ability to hear the lyrics they are saying, which, to be fair, aren't the most complex, most deep. They're not neat to hear. They're definitely more of an aesthetic music group, similar to, like... You listen to Playboy Cardi, you listen to it for the vibes, you listen to Suicide Boys for the vibes. What they're saying isn't the most important, though. I would like to be able to listen to them and understand them. Again, I could get behind the aesthetic. I'm enjoying it, it but it does make them hard to understand, and it makes the lyricism feel unimportant. But yeah, Suicide Boys did it again here with another great little short EP, Fall Seasons Yin Yang Tapes. I'm feeling a 6.7 out of 10. Now, we are talking about Sorry for the Wait by B-Love. B-Love is another buzzing, popping New York drill act. The New York drill scene has felt very uninteresting and uninspired for the last few years now. I mean, you had Pop Smoke and Fivey, who are great pioneers of the sound doing their thing. Love both of them. You had Sleepy Hollow and Chef G coming up, too, who are fine. Again, I enjoy them, but not nothing crazy. But since then... The drill market has been very much oversaturated and very much not good. Other than Ice Spice, there's very few drill rappers that I'm even tapped into or that I'm even checking in because this is not a scene that I particularly pay attention to anymore. But B-Love is not doing anything crazy, but he's got solid flows. He can rip through beats. He's got a good delivery and a versatile delivery, which is nice. You hear a lot of the people rapping these days in the drill scene like Shaq. Bro's trying to sound like Batman, you know? Like, a lot of these motherfuckers, they are sounding like straight vengeance. And uh, that's not always what I'm trying to listen to. And B-Love does a good job of switching up his menacing, scary deliveries. And he also is able to get on the beat with a nice, calm flow. Nothing too crazy. He's keeping it calm. He's rapping about maybe his love life a little bit. And he's not screaming at you. He's not screaming into your ear. He's just keeping it calm. So it's cool to see a drill rapper bringing that dichotomy because you normally do see rappers in this lane, their livery, more importantly, is what's recognizable. And B-Love here is multifaceted in that category. Also see B-Love incorporating some soul samples into the drill beats here. We're seeing some Jersey Club influence on the beats. Well, to see some refreshing productions on the drill scene because again, I've been saying this a lot I'm sure drill scene is getting hard to hear for you guys already, but it's been repetitive for a long ass time. The instrumentals have always been one of the weak points of it. Very much simple, uninteresting, basic, generic. And B-Love is shaking it up a little bit here. He's bringing a little bit of variety, so we're going to appreciate that from him. Yeah, and again, I, I'm not going to get too deep into the lyrics because it is Sorry for the Wait by B-Love. It's nothing crazy. It's exactly what you'd expect from an album like this. But it's enjoyable. I don't know if there's any tracks I'll necessarily visit here, but it is not a bad project. And it is one of the better drill projects I've heard recently. Probably the best since Like by Ice Spice. But yeah, for those reasons, I will be giving Sorry for the Wait a 5.3 out of 10. All right, next up, we got the clear... Clear 2 EP by Summer Walker. Summer Walker is a poppin' R&B singer at the top of her game right now. I mean, she's been running it the last couple years. Very low-key, but she's been there. She's been at the top of the charts doing her thing, making hits, popping off. And for a while, I always thought of her to be a more generic R&B singer, not quite on the level of someone like a SZA. And I still don't think she is. SZA's untouchable right now. But she, I, I'm realizing here she's better than I gave her credit for. She is one of the best singers around right now. That is undeniable. Her voice, the range, she is able to hit her vocal capabilities. 
are very high up in terms of active R&B singers. There are very few people touching her abilities. She's very powerful on her choruses. She has a way of captivating you with her voice. Again, different, not different, but more than most singers do right now. We'll talk about To Summer from Cole real quick, intro to the EP. And of course, another great J. Cole feature. I mean, He's been doing it for years. We know Cole's one of the best feature artists around. Again, he has been for years. But this is another one of those features where we're talking about that one track on the Creed 3 soundtrack where Cole is coming through and he's referencing the fall off. We're getting a pretty simple instrumental and Cole just rapping, very stream of consciousness, very much just what's going on in his mind right now. Again, we get the fall off reference. And it's a great track, another great Cole feature. It may be the best song but it's like, but that's not to understate what Summer Walker is doing here. A lot of the instrumentals she uses are subdued and simple. They're very natural, very earthy. They have this very like, uh, what am I looking for? This very pristine and natural sound. Also very polished instrumentals. I love, I love the beats on this album. They're very good for R&B, very lush, very vibrant very much dominated by summer walker they complement her powerful vocals perfectly creates a nice dichotomy on the track where you get the nice pristine soundscape plus summer coming through singing her ass off and it's a perfect mix this is a ep that's on the longer side closer to 30 40 minutes but it does not get boring maybe the in maybe the songs themselves meld together a little bit because to be fair there's not too much differentiation in the tracks they all follow similar song structures which is fine but it does delineate the album a little bit we also get a childish gambino verse on here surprisingly we haven't seen many people or at least i haven't seen many people talk about it online which again is interesting gambino is one of those rappers that everyone loves to talk about but we're getting a completely different gambino here it's almost like we're getting the version of him that popped up and across the spider verse you know him just sitting in the little ball because we're getting a very nasally deep voice gambino rapping very meditatively getting very personal and he's in a state we've never heard him in before the way he's rapping is almost comparable to that of uh i would say like 2015 to 18 earl sweatshirt or pretty much same time period mac miller there's light vocal distortion his voice is deepened and he's talking about some struggles. He's talking about some things he's been dealing with. Even without the Beano verse, New Type would still be a great song. Summer Walker does her thing. It's just interesting to see Gambino popping out in 2023. Well, you know, we'll, we don't really ever know what's going on with his music career. It's always in a state of flux. So it's always good to see him popping out on the rare occasion. Throughout the album, we see Summer Walker singing about bettering herself as a person, finding balance, her past toxicity, love, heartbreak, and finding balance in your life, which I think are all, some of these are very typical Summer Walker and R&B themes like love and heartbreak. But I think it's cool to see her perspective on trying to find happiness losing your old self or at least your old toxic self and finding balance and being centered in life i think it's all great morals great things to be singing about and again it's cool in to hear in a lane like r&b which is very much centric around being in love and heartbreak those are the two most common i mean that's what almost every song is about which is cool but we're seeing summer walker bringing these a little bit different themes i mean they're not that uncommon we see six lack and burn fire sing about stuff like this so it's not that uncommon or different but i mean it does make this ep stand out even more and for those reasons i will be giving summer walker's clear 2 ep a 7.5 out of 10 now we are talking about the best album this week which spoiler alert is also a 7.5 out of 10 i should mention this really quick um eps get graded on the same scale as albums but like summer walker 7.5 is different from this 7.5 that we will be talking about knack saw jim duggan by Este knock for those of you guys who are not familiar he is signed to the griselda record label under the tutelage of west side gun this project is curated by him we of course get the feature from him at the end and his influence shows this is a classic eerie griselda soundscape great boom bap instrumentals but we're also getting some nice drumless loops as well 
And to be fair, Este Nock doesn't fare too amazingly to great over some of these drumless loops, but he does have his moments to shine with it as well. His flow is very good. It just, he has trouble transitioning it to these harder to rap on beats, these less rhythmic beats. Now, Nock himself is a very similar rapper to West Side Gun. His delivery is very zany, very out there, just like West Side Gun, and so is his writing style. He's bragging his ass off the whole time. He's also got some great punchline and just out-of-pocket bars. He's just coming through talking his shit. But I think he is also takes, maybe not takes some influence, but is also similar to Conway the Machine in some ways in terms of uh, his voice, just his natural voice and his flow. Este Nock has a very good flow that he uses through this, this soundscape well, this very dingy, eerie, ex almost exactly what you'd expect from a West Side Gun curated project. I mean, there's not a beat here that sounds out of place. He proves he belongs on the Griselda label. Of course, Nock saw Jim Duggan is named after WWE Hall of Famer Jim Duggan. It was very interesting to see West Side Gun not only have him be on the album art, but he has him on the album intro doing a promo for the album, which is very cool to see, you know, West Side Gun and Griselda as a whole, the underground hip hop scene as a whole is there's a lot of WWE in there. West Side Gun, Griselda, Benny, Con you know, they all love their professional wrestling, especially Gun. So very cool to see this moment, him bringing something he's always rapping about to life quick i want to talk about the track angel dior which i think is the best exemplifier of este Knox capabilities his flows are unreal he's just rapping his ass off across the beat it is the most it is like the quintessential beat of the album it is the best boom bap underground dirty dusty but slightly elegant instrumental on this album and i mean that Knox delivery is just on a different level. He's like hooting and hollering on the chorus, saying crazy shit. He's very, very out of pocket, but fun bars. A lot of humor on this track. It's just a good time, but also intense and dark. It's what you'd expect. But like I said, for those reasons, Knox saw Jim Duggan. Also, we'll be getting a 7.5 out of 10. This album is super low-key, being super slept on, which is not a surprise. I say Knock is not very popular right now. Go check out songs like uh, Strawberry Chalk. I, th I forget if it's Strawberry Milkshake. Oh, no, I think it is Strawberry Milkshakes and Angel Dior, two of my favorite tracks on the record. I think they're definitely worth it. But, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. This has been another weekly report. Looking forward to trying to get, you know, caught up. We're still over a month behind by the time this uploads. But if you stayed through to the end, appreciate you watching, tuning in. Let me know what your favorite album this week was in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share, all that if you're messing with the videos. If not, you could do it so you don't have to be a little dickhead because you're not messing with it. You can still support. But yeah, love you guys. Appreciate you tuning in. And I'll see you next time. Peace.